Uh, hello and uh, welcome. I'm Professor Khalid Khan. Today we will talk about uh, a research thesis or a dissertation. In uh, particular, I want to highlight uh, how a student can overcome procrastination in uh, getting the work done. I am based at University of Granada and with me I have Dr. Natalia Carelli. She's in Rosario, Argentina. Uh, Natalia, can you uh, introduce yourself briefly? Hello, I'm Natalia Carelli. I'm from Rosario, Argentina. I'm living here and I have my own practi practice here. I finished my career as a dentist uh, in University of Rosario and I have my Magister of Aesthetic Dentistry, which I finished in uh, Buenos Aires University. Okay, thank you, Natalia. Well, in a professional career for a nurse, doctor, dentist, or other uh, healthcare professional, after completing the degree, we register as a professional, and then we commence training in our specialty. During the training, uh, we may have exams, and they may include the writing of a thesis. And after completing the training, or alongside, we may undertake further subspecializations, for example, as a researcher or a teacher. And this may also include undertaking work leading to a thesis, for example, as a, in a master or uh, a doctoral degree. So as a healthcare professional or a researcher or a teacher, uh, there is a need to write a thesis as the career advances. In my own case, I completed my basic medical degree in 1988 in Pakistan. Then four years later in Pakistan, I completed my professional qualification where I had to write a thesis. And a uh, few years later, I did a further thesis towards a qualification as a researcher and then I moved to England, where I spent 20 years, uh, the initial years uh, writing two further theses, one as a clinician and another to obtain qualification as a teacher. And subsequently, a further qualification was awarded to me, but here I didn't have to write a thesis. During my time there, I supervised nearly two dozen students undertaking a master or a doctoral degree uh, writing their thesis and uh, with this experience one day when I was visiting Argentina I met with Natalia she came to the meeting with a bag that you see here with a number of printed articles uh, included Natalia what happened that day can you explain Yes, I was completely lost trying to finish my thesis. I had spent like uh, three years with no results. I was printing everything, trying to read everything, trying to find the information that I suppose was good to include in it. And after I meet you, you helped me so much to organize, uh, have a protocol to start to identify the articles that I should include, the way I should do, how to organize the time to make it uh, like more efficient. Okay, so as a mentor, my role was to help Natalia make a plan. And although in the plan we think about organizing uh, the timetable uh, with the idea of working efficiently, but Above all, the plan helps to manage anxiety because if there is anxiety or stress, it's impossible to work in a relaxed fashion. And one of the things necessary for uh, this plan is to include a thesis structure where it's clear as to how many chapters we are going to include in the thesis and what will be the order in which they will be presented. Typically, there will be an introduction and a discussion and conclusion. Uh, but in between these two, there will be several other chapters. And it's very important to think carefully about what to present, but also what not to include uh, in 
the thesis that, uh, that we are planning. So this was Natalia's plan, which was uh, through, through my input uh, taken forward. Uh, Natalia, can you say how we progressed from this time onwards? Yes, uh, we changed a lot our way to organize. It was so easy with some tips you get to me to identify what to include or not, uh, how to make the way to read it faster, to have the correct information, um, to put on the thesis. Okay, so Natalia was able to undertake the work systematically. Uh, and within a short period of time, I believe around six months or so, Natalia was able to have the thesis submitted for her defense. And uh, before her defense, I received a WhatsApp from her uh, explaining to me that she was glad to have met me and had included my name in the acknowledgement section of her thesis. And that the next day she had her defense. So I wished her good luck and uh, she presented her defense successfully the next day. Natalia, what happens on the day of the defense? Can you say a few words about that? Mm, yes, it was uh, during the pandemic, so we were not able to go to university, so all the professors that was um, uh, evaluating me were connected online. I sent before the print uh, they took like one or two days to correct it and then I present the PowerPoint online and with that they made me a qualification. Okay, fantastic. So Natalia received this uh, fantastic degree from Buenos Aires. Uh, Natalia told me that she also received what is called sobresaliente or excellent uh, as her assessment and I was uh, relieved and glad that with my input, Natalia was able to uh, achieve her personal objective of uh, obtaining this higher level qualification. Uh, Natalia, I'm most grateful to you for sharing your experience uh, here in this video. And I hope that uh, this video will help others um, get on with what they need to do in order to complete their thesis work. With this, I'd like to bring the video to an end and thank Natalia one more time. Thank you, Khalil. I'm so glad to meet you in specific that important part of my life. Um, this title is part of you too. Thank you. One important thing to say as a supervisor is that uh, it's important to recognize that the work of the thesis is undertaken by the student. So the effort is owned by the student. The supervisor simply has the privilege of being part of the life journey of their student. And uh, this, this is an experience uh, as a supervisor, I can say to you, is very satisfying uh, as a professional. So thank you for listening and I wish you very good luck with your thesis.